Hello students. Now let's study magnetic flux before we move on to electromagnetic induction. Now same as electric flux, magnetic flux is also defined as the surface integral of the normal component of magnetic field passing through that surface. And here the SI unit of magnetic flux is Weber. So the mathematical formula is flux is integral B dot ds. Like in electric field we had seen flux was integral E dot ds, here it is integral B dot ds. So if this is a surface, the normal component of B dot product takes care of the that. So flux, the mathematical formula is integral B dot ds. Now B is the magnetic field vector and ds is basically the area vector. Now if we have an open surface, the area vector can be taken either in the upward direction or in the downward direction. So there are two possibilities. But if we have a closed surface, we always take the area vector as the outward normal. So if we have an open surface, you have two choices. If we have a closed surface, only take the outward normal as the area. Now see, if the magnitude of magnetic field, that is B, is constant and also the angle between B and area is constant, then we can simplify our equation. See, flux is integral, B can be taken out of the integral. So B dot integral ds. Now if we integrate ds, ds is the area vector. So if you integrate ds, we will get the area vector. So flux is B dot a. And since the angle is constant, we can also write flux is B a cos theta. So this is also the formula for flux, but it, this is valid only when B is constant and the angle between B and area is also constant over the entire surface. Then we can use this simple formula. Otherwise, we have to use flux is integral B dot ds. Now let's calculate magnetic flux in some simple situations. So in this figure, you see there is an area and magnetic field lines are passing through that area. What we can do is, first of all, draw the area vector. So area vector, we had drawn perpendicular to the surface. We can also take the area vector towards left. It's up to you. Now, sometimes the diagram can be drawn like this. This is the side view. Or if you see this diagram from the front, we can draw like this. If you see the same diagram from the left hand side, or basically call it the front view, then see the magnetic field lines are crossing that area perpendicularly. So this is also a way of drawing. Now, flux has two formulas, integral B dot ds or P a cos theta. Now, how do we decide what formula to use and how to calculate flux? So basically follow three simple steps. Now check if the magnetic field is constant over the entire surface. So in this question see, B is constant over the entire surface, okay fine. Now let's move on to checking the angle between B and area vector. So if you see, the angle between B vector and area vector is 0 degree. So angle is 0 which is also constant. Then find the flux. So flux is B A cos 0, that means flux is equal to B into A. Let's take another situation. Here the area is tilted upward. B is horizontal and which is constant. So again if you draw the area vector, we can draw perpendicular to the surface. There are other possibility also outward, but any one you can choose. Now if we mark the angle, suppose the angle of the area vector was theta from the vertical. So just calculate the angle between area vector and B vector. So we can see the angle between area and B is again theta. So B is constant over the entire surface, first step is valid. Angle between B and A is also constant theta, so we can write flux is equal to B A cos theta. So basically this thing we have studied in electrostatics, so in magnetism also or EMI also we need the concept of flux. We can also see, see if we divide the area or basically take the component, one will be A cos theta and other will be A sin theta. So the component of area along the field will not contribute in flux because the normal will be perpendicular to B. Only the component of area which is perpendicular to B contributes in the flux. So we can also write flux is equal to B into A perpendicular. In this case, A perpendicular is A cos theta. So flux will be B A cos theta. Now let's take another situations. Let's take it one by one. See, this is an area vector and B is as shown in the figure. Now directly you can see B is constant over the surface. Now angle between B and A, see the area vector is inside the plane or outside the plane. So you can take any of the two options. Let's take the area vector out of the plane. So angle between B and A is 90 degree. You can see in the diagram the angle between B and A is 90 degree. So we can write flux is B A cos theta. That means B A cos 90 which is equal to 0. Let's take this situation. Now see the magnetic field lines are inside the plane. Area vector can be taken outside or inside. So see B is constant over the entire surface. 
the angle between B and area vector is either 180 or 0 degree depends how you take the area vector. So, we, if we have taken the area vector like this, the angle is 180 degree. So, flux is B A cos 180 that means minus B A. Let us take this situation. See, this is a tricky situation. This 30 degree is useless because if you see angle between B and area vector is basically 90 degree. B is constant over the entire surface that is very obvious. Now, angle between B and A is again 90 degree because if you draw any line, the plane is perpendicular, the area vector and B vector plane is perpendicular. So, if you draw any line at 30 degree, 0 degree, 90 degree, it will all be perpendicular to the area vector. So, again flux is equal to B A cos 90 that means 0. Thank you.